This morning we're going to be in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. This is the time in our service that we get to celebrate communion. We get to, here in a few minutes, take a little cracker and a little cup of juice. And these elements represent the body and the blood of Christ at the cross. And as we take these elements, we are proclaiming and remembering what Christ accomplished on the cross. And to help us consider that this morning, to help us consider the cross, we're going to take a look at eternity. Just over three weeks ago, on a Friday, I received a phone call telling me that my uncle had just been killed. My uncle was doing what he often did. He was riding his bike to meet up with his biking group. And on that morning, he was hit by a vehicle and died shortly thereafter. I have no reason to think that he knew the Lord. As I was dealing with this shocking news of his death, my mind very quickly went to eternal realities. And our passage this morning is one that came to mind. Please follow along as I read Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Now there was a rich man And he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in the splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate, covered with sores and longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your life, you've received good things and likewise, Lazarus, bad things. But now he is being comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great chasm fixed so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and that none may cross over from there to us. And the rich man said, then I beg you, father, that you send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers in order that he may warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. But the rich man said, no, father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But Abraham said, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. In this parable, Jesus provides some pretty sobering information about eternity and what ultimately determines one's eternal destination. This parable starts off describing a rich man and a poor man. Both of them die and both of them end up in very different places. Look at verses 23 and 24. In Hades, the rich man lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And he saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue. For I am in agony in this flame. After death, The poor man, Lazarus, is is reclining with Abraham. However, the rich man, after his death, is fully conscious and is suffering in hell. He is in torment. He is in severe pain. 
He says that he is in agony in this flame. And he asks Abraham to send Lazarus so that he could dip his finger in water and drip water on his tongue so that he would have some kind of respite from this agony. He's petitioning Abraham for mercy. But in verses 25 and 26, this petition for mercy is denied. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received good things and likewise Lazarus bad things? But now he is being comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between us and you, there's a great chasm fixed so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and that none may cross over from there to us. After death, there is no mercy for those that are suffering in hell. Also after death, the destination is fixed. It is forever. The rich man in this parable is suffering and will continue to suffer forever. In verses 27 through 29, another request is made and denied. The rich man said, Then I beg you, Father, that you send him, Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brothers, in order that he may warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. The the rich man requests that Abraham send Lazarus to warn his brothers. The rich man knows that his brothers will end up where he is, if their lives don't change. He wants a man to return from the dead to bring this message of warning, to bring this admonition. But Abraham denies this request. Abraham says they actually have everything that they need. They have Moses and the prophets. They have the word of God. They don't need something else. They need to listen to and heed the word of God and they need to believe it. But that answer is insufficient for the rich man. Verse 30, But he, the rich man, said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. The rich man acknowledges his brother's lack of repentance. He knows that they have God's word, but he doesn't think that's sufficient. He thinks they need some kind of miraculous, supernatural evidence or experience to emphasize the message that they need for a change of mind. He's convinced that if they hear the warning of hell and are commanded to repent by a messenger that was sent from the dead, that they will actually repent and believe it. Abraham corrects this faulty thinking in verse 31. But he said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. No amount of evidence, supernatural or otherwise, will be sufficient to persuade one that doesn't want to listen to the word of God. What determines if you end up in heaven or hell after you die? is whether you've repented and believed. Believed what God's word has actually said. Believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and had a change of mind such that you turn from your sin and you turn to Christ. You turn to Christ and follow him. If you're here this morning and you would, by your own assessment, say that you have not repented and believed, then we ask that when the tray comes by that you simply let it pass. And I'm not just speaking to adults, I'm speaking to children, to students. You need to consider the current state of your soul. Don't wait, don't put it off. You don't know when your soul will be required of you. It may be in a moment you don't expect. You may be going about your day like you would every other day and suddenly Unexpectedly, your life is over. And then it's too late. There is no mercy in hell. 
There is no second chance. There is only torment and agony. Please don't leave here without talking to someone, talking to me, talking to any of the other pastors, talking to the person that's sitting next to you. We would love to talk to you about salvation in Jesus Christ that can only be found in Jesus Christ. Believer, the, re- the realities of hell are the penalty for our sin. And we deserve it. We don't deserve our next breath. We deserve judgment. We don't deserve our next heartbeat. We deserve suffering. We deserve the agony and torment as the penalty of our sin against a holy God. But Christ. But Christ, he went in our place and accomplished what we could never accomplish on our own. At the cross, he was offered up in our place. He received the penalty for our sins. He satisfied the wrath of the Father for us. He suffered and died that we would live. And in doing so, he rescued us. He redeemed us. He purchased us. He saved us. And for our eternal destination, we get to look forward to standing in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, worshiping our glorious and majestic God forever. Consider what Christ did at the cross to secure your eternity. When your hearts are prepared, please go ahead and take communion on your own.